Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Farm to Fork, the post-harvest podcast that interviews people of interest across the food supply chain. Today on our show, I'm joined by Ido Geltner from Aruga AI, who I'll be talking to about how their autonomous pollination robots are helping combat employee challenges within the farming industry. So with no further delays, let's get started. Well, thanks for joining me on the podcast, Ido. How are you? Hi, Mitchell. I'm fine. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to have you on. Before we get into it, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, and maybe a fun fact about yourself. Okay. Uh, I'm Ido Geltner, co-founder and CEO of Aruga. Uh, my background is actually physics and computer science. Uh, I did a PhD in the US studying laser interaction with the matter. Mm -hmm. And after that, I had a long tenure in managing R&D of a medical device company mm. where we developed a product to reduce repeat surgeries in breast cancer. Wow. And uh, that was the previous part of my career before I joined the, the ag tech community. So I will guys my first tenure, my first venture in ag tech. Yeah, wow. And what about that fun fact of yours? Well, it's fun for me. I make my own alcohol at home. <laughs> I make beer. Oh, okay. I uh, distill alcohol from all kinds of fruits depending on the, uh, on the season. Mm. So uh, that's one of my uh, hobbies. That's great. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, quite a few years. Yeah. Maybe five, six. Okay. That's great. You, you've got it down to a fine art now. It's, it's pretty good stuff you're making. Oh, yeah. My friends enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Continuing on from you telling us what you do, would you mind telling us a little bit more about the pollination robot Polly and how your innovative technology works? Okay, so maybe we'll talk a little bit in more detail later about greenhouse farming and tomatoes and, and how they reach our shelf. Mm. But the first step for any fruit is a good pollination. Mm. It's like that sets the uh, potential of the fruit, how big it is, how tasty it is. Yeah. So in tomatoes, it's kind of a unique pollination for nature. The flower pollinates itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like kind of, uh, I don't know if that's good for the pot. It's like kind of marrying your twin sister, right? <laughs> uh, so, so nature doesn't want that, but we are not eating natural tomatoes. These are not tomatoes that develop throughout history. They are uh, developed by humans, right? The by mm. selection processes and other processes. So the tomato that we eat today, grown in greenhouses, is self-pollinating, but they do not pollinate almost spontaneously. They need mm. an accurate vibration, a calibrated vibration to release the pollen on the stigma, the female organ. So when tomatoes were still grown in the field, it was done by the wind and insects. But then uh, when they were uh, inserted into greenhouses, these were not available. So people developed all kinds of mechanical methods to vibrate the flowers. And mm. about 30 years ago, they introduced bumblebees. Yeah. So, uh, these bees that were reared in factories, they were sent to the growers and placed inside the greenhouses. But we're doing the first automated robotic pollination robot. That's great. Which is intended for greenhouse tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So the robot drives autonomously down the rows of the plants. It has cameras on uh, both sides and uh, using AI-based computer vision, it detects flowers that are ready for pollination. Mm. With uh, visual cues, the, the flowers look in a very specific manner when they're ready for pollination. And then once it detects those flowers, it sends air pulses to vibrate the flowers. These are carefully calibrated air pulses in terms of duration and frequencies and pressure uh, in order to get this optimal pollination and set a high uh, potential for all these fruits. Yeah, great. You, you mentioned some of the other pollination methods that have been used previously. What would you say separates poly from other pollination practices within the food industry? So in terms of uh, good pollination, because you can pollinate tomato flowers using uh, kind of blowers, mm. right? But these don't give good results because they're not calibrated in accurate air vibration. Mm -hmm. So other methods which are, you know, give a good yield and, and taste are usually using contact either by uh, vibrating the plants using vibrators or using the bees, which touch every flower. Mm. Our robot does not touch the flowers, so it drives along the rows and sends air pulses to the, to the flowers without touching them. This prevents spread of viruses and diseases. And again, it's the first 
robotic pollinator for greenhouse tomatoes. We know of all kinds of developments, not necessarily for pollination of tomatoes, but there are all kinds of companies working on improving pollination. We're the first commercial one. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's really exciting stuff. Are there any future modules or applications for Aruga's technology? Uh, sure. My partner, Ethan Heller, in founding the company, he coined it, uh, we want to be the Swiss army knife for the tomato grower. <laughs> That's so we, we intend to introduce uh, additional modules on the robot. It's a, l- a relatively large ground robot, so it can carry quite a lot of weight. So uh, we want to eventually have even five, six modules on the robot, some mm. of them for monitoring the plants and detecting pests and disease very early on, treating them. But some are uh, especially directed to uh, reduce the labor cost and dependence of the grower. This is the number one major challenge of growers around the world in agriculture mm-hmm. in general and specifically in greenhouses where the labor cost is the highest amongst the uh, various agricultural sectors. Yeah. So we intend to kind of approximately every year release a module that places a specific task in the greenhouse. And there are quite a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really exciting. So then what would you say is the biggest challenge your team has encountered so far with your innovative products and how did you overcome it? I think that while growers are very open to innovation and they seek methods and they have huge problems in agriculture, there are huge problems. They uh, want to see it working and specifically in pollination where you pollinate the flower today and you see the final results in about a two months time, or it takes about eight weeks for the tomato to completely grow and, and uh, become ripe and ready for uh, harvest. Mm-hmm. So the uh, trials are relatively long and they're not simple. You need to take care of all kinds of factors affecting the growth of the tomatoes and uh, trialing your robot versus bees or manual methods that exist out there that the growers use. and and compare the results eventually after a few months. So these are are costly and long, Mm. and uh, they can be affected by all kinds of factors, like uh, weather or diseases. So it's it's a challenge. Yeah, definitely. You were saying at the start that your background isn't necessarily in ag tech. So I was just wondering, now entering the ag tech industry, what's the biggest revelation you've uncovered? So uh, we had many revelations discovered many things. But I think, as I mentioned a a little bit earlier, growers, on the one hand, have huge problems, so they are open to innovation. Mm. It was surprising. My my initial conception was that growers, they don't like technology, they want to stick with what they know, but growers around the world in many, many places, very open to technology and want to hear about it. They, They eventually want to see it work properly and fit into their operation. Mm-hmm. But they're very open to hearing, to meeting, to testing. I was very happy to learn that. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of collaboration within the ag tech industry. It's really cool. So from where you stand, what would you identify as being one of the biggest pain points in the food industry? So from our viewpoint, labor. Right? Labor mm-hmm. is the number one problem that we hear from growers. It's one of the biggest problems in agriculture in general but most uh, acutely in greenhouse farming. Because of unavailability, the cost is rising constantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that nobody wants to work in agriculture means that you don't have enough workers to complete tasks that you need. So that reduces your uh, yields, your quality, and that hurts the bottom line. Yeah, well, hopefully your Swiss Army robot will um, help fill the gaps a little bit. Yeah, hours and hours and uh, step by step, yeah. Absolutely. So has the COVID pandemic, for better or worse, had any effect on your day-to-day operations? So on one hand, COVID uh, even stressed further the need for automation and solutions Mm. like ours because of the problems with labor. Mm. We didn't have a large effect from COVID. It was uh, stressful at the beginning, you know, the first few months to see how things are going to go, especially in terms of work conditions and fundraising. But the best, the best part of COVID is that we were able to do a pilot with an Australian grower without even flying to Australia. So we planned to start a pilot in April of 2020. And uh, when the skies closed in March, we realized that we couldn't go there. Yeah. And so we got a lot of help from the growers technical team 
because they were very anxious to see our robots working and, and thought they could solve a lot of their labor issues. Yeah. We also found two local guys who were extremely helpful and knowledgeable. And uh, we sent them two robots, disassembled robots. They managed to assemble them, test them, and, and operate the whole pilot by themselves with our assistance, but from far away. That's fantastic. So when it comes to food loss and sustainable farming, what's the biggest area your team is curious about and why? In terms of sustainability, I think that we do use a lot of chemicals and water. And so these are challenges for all of agricultural sectors. So in general, greenhouse farming is, besides use of energy for heating, is a very sustainable way to grow crops because there's much more kilograms per meter squared, a lot less use of water, but probably 80 or 90% less water and a lot less chemicals because it's more, it's a more protected environment. And so I think that keeping the plants healthy, you know, preventing pests and disease and stresses is probably the most important thing in terms of sustainability. Mm -hmm. Robots like ours, which drive along the plants every day, uh, with cameras and sensors, they can detect uh, these stresses and pests and diseases early on when they just begin to set into the greenhouse. Hmm. And so we can either alert the grower so he, can, he or she can treat it at a very early stage before it hurts the plants and the yields. And then the robots can eventually treat these problems immediately. Hmm. Also automating the treatment, reducing uh, further the amount of chemicals uh, and keeping yields high. Yeah, fantastic. Continuing on this train of thought, is there a particular group or innovation within the industry that you're excitedly keeping a watchful eye on? So, of course, we're keeping an eye on uh, all kinds of uh, robotics for agriculture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, not only in terms of technology or even uh, competition, it's interesting to see how they enter the market, how are they fitting into the environment, how do growers operate in what ways it's very very interesting to know because the last few years are the first years that there are robotics in agriculture in general there are very few companies out there which are commercial and it's very interesting to see this coming to life yeah there are other uh, projects around the world i can mention also uh google's mineral project uh which is looking at long-term solutions for sustainable agriculture and life on earth a lot of interesting stuff going on these days yeah Definitely. So what's one thing you wish you had known when you began your career in developing autonomous pollination tech? On the one hand, there's a lot <laughs> I wish I knew, but then when I entered it, I knew that I know so little, as I mentioned earlier, mm. as this is our first venture into ag tech, the first person that we brought along was an agronomist, which is also a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So we learned uh, a lot from him and uh, he's now uh, an integral part of the team. And we're bringing all the time new team members, experts in their own fields. The fact that we started without a lot of knowledge at the beginning was uh, probably a drawback, but we did come with a fresh eye, critical eye on how yeah. things are being done. I think it's good. And now that we're almost six years in this project, five years uh, officially when we started the company, yeah. So um, it's quite a long uh, time already. Yeah, definitely. I mean, starting out, I'm sure it was daunting, but like you're saying, having that fresh outsider perspective also has its positives as well. So that's good. Well, unfortunately, Ido, we are coming to a close, but before we do, I just wanted to ask, what is the major point you really want the listeners to take away from this episode? I think the major point is not only related to Aruga and our solutions, but in the fact that there's a huge challenge in terms of food production worldwide, right? People are talking about it a lot, but I'm not sure that people really understand how much effort is put into bringing just one tomato into the supermarket. So there are more and more people in the world, weather is becoming wacky. And people don't want to work in agriculture. If any of the listeners ever went into a greenhouse in the summer, I'm, I'm not sure that he or she will probably appreciate the fruits and vegetables on the shelf, but uh, they won't want mm. to do the, the work. Yeah. So while we need to produce more food worldwide, it's under more difficult conditions and uh, labor shortage. Mm. And we need to grow it sustainably because until now we are 
ruining land, water, reservoirs, and uh, putting chemicals into the ground. So it's a, it's a huge challenge. And automation is uh, one of the solutions that are badly needed in this ecosystem. Definitely. Couldn't agree more. Well, that's all for today's episode of Let's Talk Farm to Fork. Thanks for listening, and thank you, Ido, for joining me today. And thank you for having me. If you'd like to know more about Ido and Aruga AI, check out the link in the description of the episode. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And don't forget to leave a review and share with your friends. Until next time, you've been listening to Let's Talk Farm to Fork, a post-harvest podcast. Thank you.